you you were asking me earlier. Uh, the question was when we were talking to Net and walking around, is what is a typical profile of a Hispanic uh, voter or Hispanic? It represents on this piece of card. This would be defined as a profile of Hispanic voter. This is important. We would take then here and divide the card in half. This half we would have to discard because this this side here is represents people under the age of 18 years of age who cannot vote. Yeah. Hello, how you doing this morning? My name is Margarito Zapata. Mm -hmm. I'm running for precinct three uh, constable. Mm -hmm. Mr. Cecilio Neto, mm -hmm. and uh, he's running for commissioner in precinct three. Mm -hmm. uh, what we wanted to ask you was, is the, are you registered to vote? I don't vote. My you mom vote? and dad vote, but they're not here. Okay. And we take the card again and divide it in here. This part here we will remove here because these people are not U.S. citizens and therefore thus ineligible to vote. We take the card again and divide it in half. These are the people who are not registered to vote. You don't like to be registered to vote? Um, we can register, that's what we're doing you know, tonight, trying to register people to vote. Yeah, we're yeah. trying to get the Hispanic community more involved in that. These people are gonna surface here shortly, but right now, we're dealing with this small little unit compared to a whole card that actually participate in government. We're changing that, slowly. This is your voter registration card. And what you need to fill out is all the information. Do you ask your clients to register? Mm -hmm. I've worked with the state. It's kind of just a general thing that if we do have this available for them, if they do wish to do it, I even help some people fill it out and they just sign it because they really want to. They're, they're just intimidated to do it. In this latest round, what we've done is disenfranchise uh, the voices and the will of literally, uh, you know, hundreds of thousands of Hispanic and African American voters. Are you registered to vote? Yes. You are? Yes. No, yes, I'm registered. Yes, I'm registered. Yes, I'm registered. Are you registered oh, to vote? Yeah, yeah. All of you? Uh -huh. Everybody that I know, my husband, my mother, everybody else is um, is registered and they're very active. Even my sister, she couldn't wait when she was able to get registered to vote. As soon as she turned the age that she could, she did it. I just never did and it just kept on and every year and I just would never do it. There was a time in this country where we had 80-90% turnout of the eligible population in large urban cities like Chicago, New York. These were all immigrants, didn't speak English, very poor populations. At one time at the turn of the century, 70% of New York's population was poor. And they still had these huge turnouts. How did that happen? It was because people were connected to politics in a very direct way. You had these political machines that had war healers and precinct leaders and block leaders, so everybody from the street up was connected. We don't have those kinds of connections in our community anymore. People don't know their neighbors. There's not stable institutions like political clubs or social clubs in the way we had before. So those things that used to connect us to each other and used to connect us to politics, those connecting points simply do not exist anymore. Voter registration, Voter registration cards. They changed, they changed it. You get one in Spanish now? No. Oh, you, you have to go to the website. So the poor, so the poor person would have to go to the website and download the Spanish translation. Why don't people vote? Why don't, why don't minority people vote? Yeah. Most of the time, an Anglo walk up the door and start talking about it. And, you know, first of all, they don't want to answer the door. They think you're a bill collector. But when you finally can, when you finally become trusted enough, and you can sit and really talk, it's because they believe that neither party is really going to do anything for them, that it's all bullshit, that we say we're going to, but it ain't ever happened, and it hasn't. I mean, the Democratic Party, we haven't lived up to our words a lot of times. Even when we could, we haven't. So they always tell me it's like a beast with two heads, a monster with two heads, you know, they're both feeding the same body, it's just a different face, a Republican or a Democrat. So it's a disbelief, finally, that any of us mean to really make a difference in their lives. They, they took the Southern vote for granted, the Democratic Party did.
just like they right now, they take the black and the Hispanic votes for granted. Now, whites are a minority in the state of Texas. Within a generation, Latinos and blacks and Asians will make up two-thirds of the state's population. We need to be careful that we don't create a political apartheid in which we lock out the majority population in the state from any majority rule. That revolution that needs to occur hasn't yet. It's going to, but it's not going to be violent or anything. But it's going to be disturbing. You know, I mean, people are going to be in the streets and, and there's going to be some noise made before the full reality of that apartheid system becomes known and understood. Because they felt it wouldn't matter. Their vote didn't count either way. Or it was, you know, their parents never voted, so why should they? You know, they, they're still in the same spot that their parents were and their grandparents, so there's never re really been a change. So why continue to vote? Because we found that what, pe why, what people wanted most, more than anything else, what Hispanic families wanted more than anything, is to have their children have more opportunities than they did, to have their children live the American dream. If you want your children to live the American dream in its fullest, you have to vote because your vote is your voice.